Chelsea with Ascendi Asana and welcome to day two of our five day handstand series. So in day one we covered kind of that proper foundation of a handstand. So now that we have that out of the way, day two we're going to be covering some strength building exercises to help us build strength for handstand without going inverted. jump on in today and we're going to start out with a hollow body hold. So when you're learning a yoga posture, one great way to build strength for a posture is to mimic it without actually doing it. So in this exercise, we're going to be mimicking a handstand while laying down. How cool is that, right? So we're just going to lay down on our mat. And what we want to do is remember our rib knitting exercise we did yesterday. That's what we, want to, what we want to do for this exercise. So we want to take a nice deep inhale in, put our hands on our rib cage, and then on our exhale, let's knit those ribs in, pulling our belly button towards our spine and knitting our ribs in. And when you do this, you'll notice your lower back um, ends up placing on the mat. So you want to feel your lower back on the mat for this exercise. So now that we have our ribs knit, we want to lift up our shoulders and see if we can bring our legs hovering over the mat. And you can keep your hands in this positioning, again, keeping that lower back pressed into the mat. And you just want to hold here for about 30 seconds. And if this is too easy for you, which I'm already shaking. Um, ideally, you would want to eventually bring your arms up overhead and just do this nice hold. So if this is too hard for you, whew, I can't talk and do these exercises. You can bring your knees in and pull your arms that way towards the front of the mat, still placing your lower back on the mat and just hold here. So this is a modification. And now if you want to make it even harder, you can turn this into a full blown ab exercise by extending, I should say, extending your right leg, extending your left arm up overhead and switching positions. So this activates our transverse abdominis. So the deep core muscles, so the muscles you can't see, but they're really great stabilizers for handstand. And you can do about 20 exercises of this. Again, keeping those knits, those ribs in it, and that lower back on the mat. So that's one great exercise. I apologize, I can't talk when I do these things. Um, but that's a really great exercise to mimic a handstand without actually being in a handstand. So the next exercise we want to do is um, to learn about shoulder protractions and retractions. So when we're in handstand, we want to think about pushing into the mat, so pushing the mat away. And when we did that tricep wrap where we bow the elbows out and wrap them back in, that helps us get that nice um, placement of the shoulder girdle and of the arms and broadens out that upper back. So broadens those shoulder blades, um, which is the positioning you get when you're pushing the mat away. So for um, shoulder protractions and retractions, you can either stay in tabletop, but we're going to try it in plank today for a little added core challenge. Think about knitting those ribs in still so that nice strong core pressing into that index finger mound that we learned yesterday, pushing the mat away, let's bow those elbows out, wrap those triceps in to get the proper placement of the arms, and you'll notice your shoulder blades broadening. So let's puff up through the back of the back, and then sink your chest forward now. This is what we call a retraction, and then protract those shoulders, pushing into the mat, pushing that mat away, and then retract, and then protract. 
all along, keeping that core nice and strong and engaged. Retract and then protract. Again, if this is too much, you can still do this exercise in a tabletop posture. Retract, protract. That is one way to get that nice feel for pushing the mat away from you when you get tired and fatigued. Now you can also try this with a block. Um, and one way to do this is to kind of place it in your forearms, in between your forearms. So squeeze your forearms together, put your hands in like out in front of you. Think about pressing through that index finger mound while you're pushing your arms that way and then protract. So push your arms out, broadening out those shoulder blades keeping those ribs knit under and then retract so squeezing those shoulder blades together protract pushing through that index finger mound a lot of things to think about but that's what happens in handstand retract protract retract protract if you want an even, even more of a challenge, you can keep that block in between your forearms and bring them up overhead. So when we're compensating, remember how I said if you have limited mobility in your, or limited overhead flexion, you compensate by rib, uh, flaring the ribs and see you get that nice uh, banana back. Um, that's what happens. Sometimes I get this because I don't have full overhead flexion of my shoulders at all times. I'm working on it, okay? But you might find that you do this too. So you, you bring your arms up and you're like, oh, I can do it. I can do it. But you're actually like flaring your ribs and overcompensating in your lumbar spine. So when we're doing this, think about pulling those ribs in, tucking that tailbone down, Pulling those arms back, pushing, pushing the shoulders up like we're pushing the mat away. And then back down. That was hard for me. <laughs> like I said, I don't have that full overhead flexion in my shoulders that I should. And so it is really hard for me not to compensate with my ribs and lower back. So this is an exercise I try to do a lot, but I don't do it as much as I should. So maybe this is me telling myself I should do it just a little bit more. But, so that's a fun exercise to do um, to get the proper strength and positioning. And now for the final exercise for today, we're going to be doing um, forward fold leans. So this will give us the feel of being inverted without actually um, getting that fear of falling. So what we're going to do is come up into a nice forward fold. And you want to have your hamstrings nice and loose and warmed up. So feel free to do any type of yoga class before this exercise if you want. Or just some nice um, engaged stretches. But if you want, you can just kind of pedal out your legs if you need to. But for this exercise, we are just going to be um, placing our weight into our hands as we lean forward onto our toes. So our shoulders are gonna come up over our and beyond our wrists in this exercise. And the whole point is to kind of learn um, to um, change the positioning of our hips so that they're kind of what we call stacking our hips while also learning um, how to kind of put that weight into our arms and getting used to that feeling. So when we're in a handstand, we want to think about bringing our gaze like kind of in between our hands, or you can also look at your fingertips if you'd like. We're gonna practice the hand placement that we learned in day one. So either keep your hands straight or turn them out to the side just a bit. Fingers flared, pressing into that um, index finger mound, clawing at the mat, Bowing those elbows out, wrapping them in. We're going to take a deep inhale. 
And then exhale, let's lean forward, pressing into that index finger mound, coming up onto our toes, gaze between our hands, and then back down. And I'm a little bit far away from my hands because I have tight hamstrings. Um, if you're able to get up close, um, that's totally fine and that helps a lot. So I'm going to try it with bringing my hands up or my feet a little closer. We're going to inhale and then exhale. Come up onto our toes, lean forward, hold here, and then back down. If you find that your hamstrings are really tight, like I said, you can walk your hands or you walk your feet out a little more. You can also bend your knees. So we're just trying to get that positioning, um, you know, the feel for putting our weight in our hands. So you don't need your, this isn't a hamstring stretch. So you can bend those knees if you want to. So let's try it with our knees bent. So we're going to inhale, exhale, let's lean forward. and then back down. And now we're going to try this with um, moving our gaze from in between our hands and tucking our head towards our knees. So they always say like um, flip your gaze kind of. So when you first start out you're kind of looking at your hands and at the mat and then as you become really good at handstands you're able to Flip your gaze to in front of you. So that's what this exercise kind of gets you prepared for. When we're doing our freestanding handstand in day five, we're not going to be worrying about the gaze flip, but the, for the purposes of this exercise, um, it really helps you get that nice compression uh, between your legs and your chest. So that's what this one is going to go for. We're going to try to compress our legs and our arms and our head together. So nice inhale and exhale. Tucking our chin towards our legs. You can bend those knees if you want to. And then back down. Let's do two more of these. Deep inhale, exhale. Come up onto our toes. And back down. Make sure those triceps are still wrapped in. We'll do one more. Inhale and exhale. And back down. So I hope those are enough strengthening drills for you to try um, and feel a little more prepared for your handstand journey. So um, tomorrow, day three, we're going to be talking about how to safely enter into and then safely fall out of handstand because that's a lot of people's fear is falling and hurting themselves. So we're going to be talking about what you can kind of do to help feel a little more, little more safe. Um, while you're learning how to handstand. So I hope you join me for day three, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.